Hello and welcome to this interview. This is March is Women's History Month and Home TV is doing a program series looking at female leaders in our community. And one of them is Erin Cornett. She is the social media specialist guru at Meridian Township. She is normally behind the scenes. <laughs> and so we are very appreciative of Erin coming on the program today and talking with us. Thank you so much for coming on here. Thank you. It's kind of flattering to hear that you're a leader in a community. <laughs> you are. Um, and there are several positions, I think, in the township that most people are probably either unaware of mm -hmm. or they don't know what it takes to do something that's that's going on to make something happen mm -hmm. um, so for instance uh, when when the township has an ice storm or the flooding incident that recently happened there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes to inform residents of what's happening and you're one of those people that brings that information to the community yeah yeah we um you know, it's a, kind of a small team here at the township, so it does take a lot of um, a lot of effort and a lot of initiative to be able to get those communications out to everyone. It takes a lot of driving around and getting photos and um, updated video, just so we can always keep the residents informed of things happening in their community. Now, Erin, you've been with the township for how long? I have been here for probably about a year and a half. A year and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where were you before that? Oh, before this, I um, worked, actually I spent a, a short amount of time working for a small marketing agency mm -hmm. um, just outside of Brighton. And we um, worked with several companies and some were actually here in the township. Okay. So I was already, I like to think that I was already working on township communications before <laughs> I even got here. <laughs> Did that make you fall in love with the township? <laughs> well, I actually grew up just outside the community. So I grew up on the west side of Lansing okay. and um, my entire family on my father's side lived in Meridian Township and they all grew up. They went to Hazlitt schools. So I feel like it was already a second home anyway okay. um, because my entire life has been coming out here. So to be able to do these types of communications for the township is really like a dream job. Was it different coming from the uh, marketing world into government? Yes. It is really different going from marketing to government. Um, there's a lot more, you know, usually I I've, I've, have a lot of experience in destination marketing mm -hmm. um, or sales marketing. And then to be able to come to township and do a lot more like crisis communications um, is really exciting. And mm -hmm. it is different. And it's, you know, every day you learn something new. But I think that's what that's what makes it the most fun. Now, you also work with uh, the student interns, and we interviewed Brandy last week, the home mm -hmm. TV executive producer here, and she was talking about, you know, some of the strides that she has made in uh, the department and some of the changes that she's helped here. What, how, how is your role, or what is your role with the interns? How do you, how do you assist them and help them to mature into social media ex experts in the industry? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of the news industry is going digital. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot more um, live programming on social, just like what we do here at Home TV, um, and you see that throughout news broadcastings, um, a lot of live tweeting for news broadcasting. Um, especially when there's press conferences or events going on. So my role with the interns is to um, make sure that they understand and that they have knowledge of how to do the live social, how to um, properly promote their stories, um, and also how to create their own brand image mm -hmm. for when they do go out and become, you know, whether it's news reporters or if they join a production team. Um, and, and it's not just, um, you know, sharing of sharing their news, but it's also sharing who they are as a reporter and, and what their brand will, will be when they step out into the real world. So you mentioned brand. Meridian Township launched a new brand last year. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think is one of the biggest surprises internally and externally regarding brands and brand management? Well... I think what's huge that I've just learned from doing brand management is, I mean, the image is, is really everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's learning to uh, 
make sure that people know your image, mm -hmm. whether it's a logo or whether it's um, a phrase or, or a slogan, mm -hmm. um, whether it's the way that you communicate with people um, and to keep that consistent. So it's, um, I've, I've learned a lot when it comes to that. And, um, and I think that it's, it's a definitely, it's a change and a transition. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a slow process. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I think we're, you know, Meridian Township's doing a great job as far as, um, getting the, the new brand out there. What are, what is, uh, one of the, or what are some of the biggest challenges facing social media content managers. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are on Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram mm -hmm. and they're sharing their, their life with other people. They're sharing their experiences, their destinations, their kids growing up. I swear I'm going to watch my cousin's <laughs> kid grow up from a baby into, <laughs> into mm -hmm. adulthood all on Facebook. Yeah. Um, what is what is the the myth or misnomer out there in regards to people who actually work in social media and do social media content management? Well, to answer your first question, I think the hardest is to continue your brand and or product or just really a business on mm -hmm. social is starting to get a little bit difficult mm -hmm. um, because they people want to have you know that personal connection on social mm -hmm. media. So one of the biggest challenges is how do I become personable mm -hmm. on social as a business, as a brand. Um, and then some of the misconceptions of, of managers is that um, we know everything. <laughs> we know what's trending <laughs> at, that, at that very second. Uh -huh. um, but trends and news happen so quickly. Um, so you do definitely have to keep up with everything. Mm -hmm. One thing that um, my husband used to tease me about is, well, you play on Facebook all day. Yeah. I said, oh, I'm not playing. Uh -huh. I'm researching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it takes a lot of research. It takes a lot of uh, monitoring of mm -hmm. your audiences and making sure that whatever message you're trying to get out under your page or your profile is the right message that your audience is going to receive. Are you constantly learning? Is there a constant, geez, that worked or that didn't work? Or, or Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you learn every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's, it's learning about, you know, if you were to post a really great image, you know, take Pure Michigan, for example, they mm -hmm. post amazing images mm -hmm. on their social platforms, yes. but how do they know which one works? How would they, you know, know? And I think every time they think, all right, this one worked really well because these are the characteristics. They need to analyze it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What do you think, um, looking back, how long did you say you've been with the township? I've been here for um, a year and a half, a year but and I've a been half. in the industry for about three and a half to four years. Okay. So what have you learned um, in your time being social media content manager uh, that has worked the most, that has been the most effective? I Is there think... any one thing? Can, <laughs> well, can there be any one thing? I don't know if there can be any one thing, but I do know that we do find a higher success rate with videos. Mm -hmm. um, our residents really love to see what's happening at that exact time. Mm -hmm. They really love the live videos and they love the construction. And they love that construction. was something I was told right when I started mm -hmm. and they love it. And I, you know, looking back, I just think, of course they love it. You know, if the road is closed or mm -hmm. if they see, hear something loud outside, they want to know what's going on. And um, so definitely getting them a video, putting something together, like that uh, really brings attention and, and provides a lot of information for them. And I think that our residents really like that and appreciate it. And you also, um, I don't want to dismiss other things that you mm -hmm. do. You also write press releases for the township. Yep. Uh, you also write the digital newsletter for, mm -hmm. for the township. It's a weekly newsletter. Mm -hmm. And what reminded me of that is uh, the information that went in today's newsletter, yep. which is potholes. Potholes. How, how do you report <laughs> potholes? Such a simple thing to think about that maybe people don't even know. Right. But it's just or automatic. Or that you can, you know. That you can on, report it. Yeah, you can report on potholes. I didn't yeah. know you could do that. Yeah, you can <laughs> report it. Um, and then, and you work on, you work on the township website. Yes. As well. And so you're yep. managing all, all of those things. Yeah. Is there, what is the hardest audience to hit so far since you've been here? If you oh, that's a good question. Think about the, you know, Meridian Township's uh, family friendly and mm -hmm. people move here to raise their kids and, and 
go to the school districts here because they have excellent school districts. Um, what's, yeah. What's the hardest audience you think? You... I think, well, uh, there's two different ones. So I think with the township, the senior audience is a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, it Because it a lot of the stuff that I do do is, is digital. Mm -hmm. um, and even though the senior community is slowly getting into social media and as we see generations go by we're gonna see a, a lot more of them on there um but currently that was pro that's probably the hardest audience to hit um but it's not really the hardest audience to hit on home tv mm -hmm. when i work with the interns mm -hmm. um, because they do watch our channel and um so that one isn't the most difficult i think the most difficult is the younger audience with okay. home tv um so it's yeah. two opposite ends mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, you know, it's you able to hit the younger something. audience on, on social media and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any tidbits of advice or anything else you want to share with us? Oh, no, <laughs> 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 I say no, but there's like 8 million things popping in my head. I mean, it's just, it's a really exciting time to be on social media because mm -hmm. things are changing and trends change every day. Um, if I were to give a tip to anyone, I would say stick to one that you really do enjoy mm -hmm. and, um, and to stay there. You don't have to be everywhere at once. Um, you don't have to try to put your foot in all of, in all of the different platforms, but, um, find the, the few that work and then you can really excel at those. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you, you coming on <laughs> and sharing. Uh, I just want to let the public know that the Michigan Association of Broadcasting um, Conference is tomorrow at the Lansing Center on Wednesday. And Aaron is going to be giving a social media presentation for one of the workshops. And she's going to be doing it with Michelle. Michelle Oliver. Oliver. Michelle, we have a Michelle here, so the, <laughs> the last name escaped me for a brief second. Um, with Michelle Oliver, and Michelle is a Home TV alum. She's from here, and she does Live in the D, and she has a very active Instagram account. So I can imagine that this workshop between the two of you, two excellent social media content managers, is going to be a fantastic one. So if you have an opportunity, if you're interested in that kind of thing, mm -hmm. it would be great if you went out to the conference and, and attended the workshop. Yeah, it should be fun. And you can check it out online. Thank you so much for joining me, and I want to thank you at home for joining me. This has been a, another March is Women's Month program. <laughs>